As we all know, Haiti's history, have been filled with corrupt leaders that have always put other nations' interests before their own nation. Haiti's current issues are stemmed from years of bad leaderships, and treacherous acts of violence and corruptions, that have plunged the nation into a state of perpetual poverty, and crime sprees. Contrary to European popular beliefs, Haiti is not cursed because of voodoo, but because of many puppet leaders, that have been installed by the international community, and unfair foreign policies, that have greatly impeded the growth of the nation. Today we're going to look at the top worst Haitian presidents in history, and how they have contributed to the country's downfall, and the reasons behind their decisions. Number 10. Stanio Vincent. Stanio Vincent, presided over Haiti from November 18, 1930, to May 15, 1941. Stanio Vincent was born in Port-au-Prince, and belonged to the mulatto elite class. In October 1937, military troops, and police from the Dominican Republic, massacred thousands of Haitian laborers, living near the border in the Parsley Massacre. Vincent had enjoyed a cooperative relationship, and financial support from the government of Dominican dictator, Rafael Trujillo. Because of his close ties to Trujillo's dictatorship, Vincent failed to press for justice for the slain workers, which prompted huge protests in Haiti's capital. Number 9. Ali Lescott. L.D. Lescott, was the president of Haiti from, May 15, 1941, to January 11, 1946. Lescott was born in St. Louis du Nord, to a middle-class mixed-race family, descended from free persons of color, in the colonial era. After taking power, Lescott struck a deal with the U.S., for production of rubber in the Haitian countryside. The program was called, the Société Haitiano-American de Development Agriculture, or SHADA. Nearly a million fruit-bearing trees in Jeremy were cut down, and peasant houses were invaded and razed. Lescott authorized the killings of thousands of peasants, who stood against him, as he plunged the country into famine. Number 8. Joseph Raoul Cedros. Joseph Raoul Cedros, was a mulatto Haitian former military officer, who was the de facto ruler of Haiti from 1991 to 1994. Cedros was chosen by the US and France, to be in charge of security for the Haitian general election, 1990, 1991, and subsequently named Commander-in-Chief of the Army, by Jean Bertrand Aristide in early 1991. Even though Cedros was a high-ranking official in the Haitian army, his loyalty was to the US. Under Aristide, Cedros was one of the most important source for the CIA, providing reports critical of President Aristide. Cedros was also responsible for the 1991 Haitian coup d'état, which ousted President Jean Bertrand Aristide, on September 29, 1991. In the three years following the coup, international observers estimated, that more than 3,000 men, women and children were murdered by, or with the complicity of Cedros, then coup regime. Number 7. René Préval. René Garcia Préval, was a Haitian politician and agronomist who served twice as president of Haiti, once from early 1996 to early 2001, and again from mid-2006 to mid-2011. During Préval's terms, he managed to hand over majority of government institutions to private companies, furthering enriching the small mulatto group in Haiti. He solidified U.S. relations through a number of deals, and bad contracts that went against the Haitian people. In early April 2008, riots broke out over the high cost of food, since 2007. Prices for a number of essential foods, including rice, had risen by about 50%. René Garcia Prevel's presidency was filled with unfulfilled promises to the Haitian population, and the privatization of government institutions. Number 6. Michel Martelly. Michel Martelly, is a Haitian musician and politician who was the president of Haiti from, May 2011, until February 2016. Between March and April 2012, Martelly was accused of corruption, with allegations, that during and after the 2010 earthquake and presidential election, he had accepted $2.6 million in bribes to ensure, that a Dominican Republic construction company, would continue to receive contracts under his presidency. Martelli denied the allegations. In November 2013, anti-government protests were held in the country, over the high cost of living and corruption. The highlight of Michel Martelli's presidency, is the mismanagement of the petro Caribe money. Michel Martelli's regime, was accused of embezzling and wasting, 
$2 billion from Venezuela's Petro Caribe, petroleum import finance project. Although no one was formally indicted, the Petro Caribe scandal will forever leave a stain on Michelle Martelli's presidency. Number 5. Jean Bertrand Aristide. Jean Bertrand Aristide was Haiti's first democratically elected president. Aristide was briefly president of Haiti until a September 1991 military coup. The coup regime collapsed in 1994 under U.S. pressure and threat of force. And Aristide was president again from 1994 to 1996 and from 2001 to 2004. Aristide's grave mistake was dismantling the Haitian armed forces for fear of another coup against his regime. Unfortunately, immediately after the dismantling of the army, the ex-generals and soldiers orchestrated a coup against Aristide that plunged the young nation into complete chaos. Aristide decided to arm his supporters, mostly young people from the slums in order to combat those ex-military soldiers. Between early 2001 and 2004, ex-army paramilitary groups conducted an insurgency, killing dozens of Lavella's activists, officials, and civilians. After Aristide was ousted, retaliation against his supporters was gruesome. For weeks you could smell the stench of burning bodies that were thrown into ravines and woods. Number 4. Ariel Henry. Ariel Henry is currently the de facto prime minister and acting president of Haiti after the elected president Jovenel Moyes was brutally assassinated in his home in the early morning of July 7, 2021. He later became involved in a controversy due to his refusal to cooperate with the authorities over his links with one of the suspects accused of orchestrating the assassination of President Jovenel Moyes. A recent FBI report revealed that Ariel Henry not only have been trying to derail the assassination investigation, he's also been harboring the criminals involved in the investigation, helping them escape the country by providing them with immigration assistance. Number 3. Jean-Pierre Boyer. Jean-Pierre Boyer was one of the leaders of the Haitian Revolution and president of Haiti from 1818 to 1843. Boyer believed Haiti had to be acknowledged as an independent nation, and that this could be established only by cutting a deal with France. On July 11, 1825, Boyer signed an indemnity treaty, stipulating that Haiti would pay France a certain amount of money to compensate for the lost property and slaves and trade in exchange for formal diplomatic recognition of its independence. Boyer's indemnity treaty was a crushing economic blow to Haiti. After he annexed the Dominican Republic to Haiti, Boyer failed to implement effective policies that would have a positive impact on the whole nation. He mismanaged the funds in the state treasury and reallocated farming lands that belonged to the nation peasant class to his mulatto already wealthy supporters. Number 2. Jean-Claude Duvalier. Jean-Claude Duvalier, nicknamed Baby Doc was a Haitian politician who was the president of Haiti from 1971 until he was overthrown by a popular uprising in February 1986. Jean-Claude Duvalier ascended into power at the age of 19. His young age made him gullible and was easily influenced by the people around him, including his wife, divorcee Michelle Bennett. While most of the population was struggling, Duvalier married Michelle Bennett in an extravagant wedding that cost 2 million US dollars. Discontent among the business community and elite intensified in response to increased corruption among the Duvaliers and the Bennett family's dealings, which included selling Haitian cadavers to foreign medical schools and trafficking in narcotics. At the request of U.S. agricultural authorities, Duvalier eradicated all of Haiti's pig population in 1982, which spread already serious economic devastation among the peasant population who bred pigs as an investment. Jean-Claude Duvalier ruled the nation with an iron fist. Any revolt and demonstrations were quickly put down by the regime's paramilitary group, the Tonton Makouts. It is estimated that Jean-Claude Duvalier and his wife Michelle Bennett have amassed between 300 million US dollars and 800 million US dollars from the Haitian people before they were ousted. As a bonus, I wanted to mention that King Henri Christophe should have made it to the list because of his role in the assassination of both Emperor Jean-Jacques Dessalines and Commander Capoise Lambert. Number 1. Alexander Pétion. Alexander Sabes Pétion was the first president of the Republic of Haiti from 1807 until his death in 1818. 
It is said, after participated in the Haitian Revolution, Petion and his allies, along with Henri Christophe, plotted the death of Haiti's first emperor Jean-Jacques Dessalines, simply for power and properties. Petion also wrote a letter to Dessalines' wife, Marie-Claire Os Felicité, justifying the reasons why her husband had to be assassinated. After the death of the emperor, the Senate attempted to appoint Henri Christophe, as the new leader in multiple Senate meetings. Each time Petion would pay his supporters to riot, burn and pillage the streets where the meetings were conducted. Eventually, civil war broke out, which separated Haiti into two parts, with Petion and his supporters in the south, and Henri Christophe in the north. I want all my supporters to know that, this video is not to criticize those individuals, that made the list, but to learn from their mistakes, in order for the future leaders of the Republic of Haiti, to make better decisions, on behalf of the Haitian people. Thank you for watching.